Good evening, I'm Russell Nankervis and welcome to the Weekly Assessment. Not more homework! I'm joined by the radiant Prue Souza. How are you going, Prue? Good, how are you, Russell? I'm good, and you ready for tonight? I am so ready. Excellent. <laughs> and of course, I can't forget the enigmatic Kieran Taylor. How are you going? Um, I think there's been some confusion. I'm just a janitor. What the hell kind of janitor wears a suit? A very well-paid one. <laughs> Oh, whatever. Uh, tonight on the show we have a live musical performance by the lovely Lisa Maps. We take a look at the new Tomb Raider movie and also have a bit of fun with the audience. Now, to our first topic of the night, I'll hand over to Prue. It's that time again in Canberra. The Canberra Comedy Festival has come back. Uh, this week we talked to one of the organisers to get a better idea of how to get something together like this. So the Canberra Comedy Festival has been going since 2013. Uh, so what is the idea behind it? The idea behind Canberra Comedy Festival, I guess it came out of being involved with promoting comedy shows in Canberra. And around this time of year, there's other comedy festivals around the country. And we're finding that there's lots of cool shows ready to tour around and they wanted to come here and we just didn't really have the capacity to do it at that time and we wanted to bring cool shows to Canberra. So what is the cycle of preparation for the Canberra Comedy Festival? There's a lot of, a lot of hard work and it's pretty much year round in a way, like by the, you know, we wrap things up after one festival and then pretty soon after we, we're talking to acts and we're talking with venues about dates and all that sort of thing. Now exactly what is the turnout for the Canberra Comedy Festival this year? Well, it is our biggest festival yet in terms of the number of shows, the number of performers and our capacity. And do you have a joke for us, Tim? Oh, I don't think I've got a jo joke that's suitable for uh, CIT News. Canberra Comedy Festival actually began back in 2013 and it has grown quite a lot since then. Uh, this year we saw the likes of Stephen K. Amos, Ross Noble, Claire Hooper uh, and local talent Luke Burney who I actually went to school with. Oh, that is so cool. Personally, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Joel Creasy. He's a comedian that uh, has definitely made me laugh. Um, and I, he's just unapologetically gay, which I absolutely <laughs> love. Anyway, moving on, our next topic is No Laughing Matter. It is something I've been looking forward to the entire night. Uh, so it is time for the 60 second controversy. So how this, is wor how this will work is I'll be giving a topic by the producer. Thank you, Elias. There we go. Uh, and for 60 seconds, we'll have a brief discussion uh, debate, argument, or whatever, uh, and we have to do it all in 60 seconds. Now, I want this to be respectful. I don't want this to be anything that the ACL would be proud of. <laughs> ah, so, let's have a drum roll from the audience, please. Fantastic. That's like hey, hey, and Saturday. It's fantastic. Ah, <laughs> uh, so, we have violence in video games as our topic this Ooh. evening. Ah, uh, so, pretty much this comes back down to, so we have uh, Donald Trump came out after the last... Uh, mass, unfortunate mass shooting in the US saying that, you know, gun violence in video games is triggering this. They even did it back with Columbine where they were looking at, um, you know, Marilyn Manson in video games for that as well. And even as recently as um, the last month here in Australia, they've been talking about the video game Fortnite, which is a mm -hmm. third person shooter, and the amount of kids that are playing that. Uh, so, how is this affecting us? We've got 60 seconds. Go for it. Well, I mean, I killed at least 40 to 50 people in Overwatch last night and I'm not on ASIO's watch list yet. <laughs> I mean, like tens of thousands of people died during the Crusades and I don't recall them playing Call of Duty back then. <laughs> <laughs> I've played many, many hours of FIFA and I'm not good at football or soccer in real life, so what does that tell you? Yeah, how great would it be if you could actually play a video game where, you know, like The Sims, where you'd actually get better at cooking by playing it. <laughs> Only downside, though, is that you'd get stuck in the pool if they removed the... <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you get, if they removed the ladder. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I will say in defence of the argument, a lot of people that grew up playing Pac-Man did end up chasing pills and then running away from imaginary ghosts. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think violent people are just always going to be violent, whether it's to do with games or not. Well, there you have it. That's, we probably went a bit over, but we don't have a clock. Uh, so, <laughs> whatever. Time is all relative anyway. Uh, so pretty much in summary, really, if people are going to blame video games for violence, they should be looking at all media, whether it's TV, uh, video games, uh, not video games, movies or books, because uh, they all do have quite violent, like Kill Bill is a very good example of violence <laughs> in movies. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. I guess that's our controversial minute. And we didn't, 
Oh, I, we didn't end up killing each other, no blood? I'll do it later. Oh, fine. <laughs> excellent. I look forward to it. Uh, excellent. Well, we need to take a break now, and we'll be right back with my interview with Catherine Laverty and a live performance from Lisa Maps. You're watching The Weekly Assessment. <laughs> Welcome back to The Weekly Assessment. Hey, Russell. You're openly gay, right? I sure am. Why do you ask? Guys, guys, guys. Can we stop with the exposition? Evan has an all-seeing eye and he is definitely watching us. If Evan's got an all-seeing eye, then he would have seen these posters around the CIT <laughs> advertising for the LGBTIQ equity officer. Mm. How cool is that? It's totally cool, I'm going to be honest. Uh, and I sat down with her earlier this week to speak to her about her role and how it'll help LGBTIQ students at CIT. Thank you for joining us on the weekly assessment, Catherine. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit about the role and how it came to be? Uh, so I'm in student support. We're all equity officers and we didn't have a specific person in the role of LGBT um, contact. So uh, I, was, I was contacted by someone I know in another directorate and because I was basically the only lesbian, he knew at CIT, um, and that's how it started. Marriage equality gave it a bit of momentum as well because of all the social media stuff and thinking about how young people and you know our students um, might actually need a bit more of a visible support here. This role is only new. How is this going to benefit um, students at CIT? It's kind of still in the planning stage because we're still trying to work out whether it's something um, that's actually needed here. And, and I think the reason is because the student population at CIT is quite transient. So we're talking six months to a year and then students move on. So we were hoping to try and get something that's a bit more student-led, but that's been quite difficult. And then we kind of need to assess, well, is there a need for anything more visible other than a contact officer if you are experiencing difficulties? What do you feel like um, you are going to bring to the role? I think it's really important that somebody who identifies as lesbian or gay, bisexual, uh, transgender is in the role, if we can manage it. But I think it's really important to have somebody who who can on some level understand the issues that people are coming to them about. If I could talk to my 19 year old self, oh my god, I just want someone to tell me you're just as valid as everybody else, you have a right to an opinion, um, there are other people out there like you, um, and just, yeah, just be confident that you have as much to contribute as other people and don't feel less than anyone else. They will be made to feel that way. Well, thank you so much for joining me on the weekly assessment. I hope everything goes well. And um, yeah, hopefully we might be able to see more of your work in the future. Thank you so much for joining us. No worries, thank you. That is so good to see. It really is. So, Russell, what's the best way to contact Catherine? Uh, if you want to contact Catherine, the best way to contact her is via email. So you can do cit.student.support uh, at cit.edu.au. Oh, there's a lot of dots. Uh, or give her a call at 026207-3329 during business hours. All right. Well, you two have had your fun, so I'm going to introduce our next guest. She has come all this way, bravely crossing Lake Burley Griffin with nothing but a guitar on her back and a song in her head. Ladies and gentlemen, please make her feel welcome, Lisa Maps. Hey everyone, I'm Lisa Maps, and this is my song Heart First. Warm my skin Cause I 
Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lisa. Give it up one more time, please, for Lisa. Thanks. <laughs> Excellent. So you're a student with us here at CIT as well? I am, down at Woden, yes. Oh, is it scary down there? Oh, sometimes. <laughs> it gets dark at night. It does. Uh, excellent. So, um, you, clearly by your musical talents, you've been doing music for a while. How long have you been doing music for? Um, roughly forever, but more specifically in front of other people about the last two years or so. Oh, excellent. And if people really enjoyed your content, where, they, where can they hear more or see more from you? Well, you can find me on social media. I am at Lisa Maps Music um, on both Facebook and Instagram. Both of those also link through to my SoundCloud where you can stream a few of my original tracks, including the one that you have just heard. So if it is stuck in your head later and you really just want to give it another listen, uh, you can go there and do that. Do yourself a favour and find her on SoundCloud. I need a hat for that, don't I? Uh, excellent. Please give it up one more time for Lisa Knapp, please. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this break. You're watching the Weekly Assessment. <laughs> Welcome back to the Weekly Assessment. Now, are you two familiar with this game? I believe every uh, teenage male that grew up in the last 20 years is familiar with that game. <laughs> and some ladies. Uh, apart from that, Lara Croft, aka the Tomb Raider, is an iconic video game character who has been portrayed as the ultimate badass. In the 2013 reboot, 
of the series, we follow Lara as she makes her journey from naive young girl to a more mature and independent woman. So we'll have a quick look at the trailer now for the new uh, movie, not the video game. Uh, so what do you guys think? I'm glad you, I'm glad you mentioned that was for the movie because otherwise that would be great graphics for a game. <laughs> wow. Uh, but I will say, I, I was a little disappointed about the overuse of cliches there, but I think the one that most troubled me was the stakes and, you know, not the yummy ones. But, like, every Hollywood movie lately is, oh, it, the world's at stake and only this single person can save it. And you just know that your protagonist is going to pull through. So I would have preferred to see uh, more personal and localised stakes, but still keep them high. That way we have a, you know, is she going to pull through? I think that would have been better. I can't wait to see what's in that tomb. <laughs> but other than that, I think Lara looked like a fantastic puzzle-solving, trap-dodging, arrow-shooting, gun-firing badass. Yeah, and the casting was spot-on, especially with the rebooted character model from the new games. Alicia Vikander just seems to match that identically. So. Excellent. Well, we sent a camera down to the local cinema to see what some of the moviegoers thought. Hi, I'm Jack. And I'm Tia. Hi, my name's Patrick. Hi, I'm Bianca. And uh, we just watched the Tomb Raider, which I thought was very good. I would give it a 5 out of 7 perfect score. To be honest, I don't even remember what movie I saw. I thought it was terrible. Um, I actually quite um, enjoyed how she wasn't as sexualized, as in the Angelina Jolie one. I did not like it very much. It was ridiculous and unrealistic, and she was too lucky. It's impossible to be that lucky. The storyline lacked. Yeah, it was it was dif it was difficult to suspend disbelief. Yeah, in terms of storyline, it was just pretty average, pretty. Sh um, coming from a gaming perspective, I was like, what the f is happening? I, however, I thought it was good. Um, you know, it was good storyline, classic, no, classic girl looking for a dad. You can relate to that. And <laughs> I would never look for my dad. Yeah, so. Um, well, that looks like it was a fun action movie, but they still haven't been able to translate uh, a video game into a movie properly just yet. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's been on my list to uh, make a video game movie in the future. I had Dark Souls in mind, but honestly, I don't think if I could live to see it through. <laughs> Damn it, Kieran. <laughs> okay, now it's time for our final segment of the night. $20 for 20 questions. Uh, so I've sent Prue off into the audience to hopefully find <laughs> someone for us. Uh, so there we go. Where she, oh, yep. Where is she? She got someone. Jordan. No. Someone's got to come up. Here we go. Uh, Max. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, we got a redhead. This is exciting. Oh, all right, blonde. scooch over. It's a bit adorable. Oh. Excellent. Let me get my <laughs> questions. There we go. No, you're all right. Excellent. So, random audience member, what is your name? Uh, my name is Max Carlisle. Max Carlisle. Yes. That is oh, correct. That's a Doctor Who thing. They're called Carlisle. What does Carlisle mean? Um, is it like depression or something? I hope not. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, fantastic. Well, that's not one of the questions. So, we're going to just ask you a whole bunch of questions in 20 seconds. Okay. Um, so, not 20 questions because we tried it. We can only do five. Uh, so, we're going to do, yeah, as many questions as we can in 20 seconds. If we like your answers, you'll get $20. Okay. So, where's my $20? Someone hold that. You hold that. There we go. Don't spend it or use it on cocaine. Uh, brilliant. So let's start. Let's let's ask some questions. Okay. So what is five by eight? Well, five times eight. Five times eight is forty. Yep. Uh, what does FEF mean? FEF stands for focus, exposure, framing. Well done. What is the name of Evans Wombat? Oh 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 um oh oh I'm gonna get in hell for this. Um <laughs> William. Uh, oh. uh, how long was the Hundred Year War? Hundred Year War was one hundred and eleven years. No, one hundred sixteen. Mm. Close. Uh, how many Oscars did the Titanic receive, or did Titanic the movie receive? Uh, two. No, eleven. Eleven. Um, <laughs> what year was JFK killed? Uh, nineteen sixty-three. Well done. Uh, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? What? Exactly. <laughs> um, and true or false? Is a peanut a nut or a? Uh, well, yeah, is it a nut? No. True. Correct. Um, and finally, who would you turn gay for? Chris Pratt, definitely. Yeah, I don't mind him. Mm, yeah. Pretty, he's pretty good. Yeah, he's pretty good. Well, <laughs> what do you think, audience? Do you think he, he passed the test? 
Okay, give us the money. Okay. Don't be inappropriate. I call this uh, the Queensland Police Service. Uh, oh, oh. The Dodgers. <laughs> wow. <'cause that's... laughs> there we go. Thank you so much, Max. Give it up for Max, please. Thank you. Hey, right, gotta get back into the shot. There we go. Am I good? We good? Whew. Okay, that was fun. Yeah. Uh, what am I doing with that? Whatever. Uh, brilliant. Okay. Well, uh, that's pretty much it for tonight. But before we go, how do you how do you think we went tonight? I think we did awesome. What do you think, audience? And some people honestly doubted we could do anything like this. Anyway, and what about you, Kieran? Uh, right. Okay, well, I guess that's it. Ah, so, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you next time on the weekly assessment. Good night. <laughs>